recording right now. All right, so uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Larry Mormon. I'm the athletic director at Longfellow Middle School and uh, came up with this um, little series that we want to do for students, um, obviously our students at, at the Lion's Den at Longfellow and for the parents and for the community to uh, be able to get to know our coaching staff, uh, the coaches that serve our wonderful students at Longfellow Middle School. And so today I am joined by the one and only John Morstead. Uh, and uh, coach, I mean, I, I know the answer to these questions, but obviously some of the people that are joining us may not. So some of these questions are going to seem, you know, a little obvious to a lot of people watching, but we'll assume that maybe some people watching don't know you. So let's start off with the easy stuff. Um, what do you, what sports do you coach at Longfellow? Uh, I currently am coaching football, eighth grade boys, basketball, and assistant coach for track. Yeah, you. he is a man of many hats. He does a lot of things. Um, do you wear any other hats at Longfellow or? Other organizations or help? Do you do anything else uh, at Longfellow outside of just coaching? Uh, I serve in the school where I do a uh, one-on-one -on -one with students. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's a he's a TA here at Longfellow. Um, let me ask you, uh, Coach Morstead, how long have you been coaching? Uh, I am going to be coaching this upcoming season. Will be my nineteenth year. Dang, nineteen years. That's crazy. That's older. That's longer than all the students we have at Longfellow. <laughs> yeah, a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how about this? Uh, let me ask you this. How did you become, can you tell us about the process of how you became a coach at Longfellow? Uh, I became a coach at Longfellow. I was at a uh, junior high in uh, Moore, Oklahoma, from Moore Public Schools. And through coaching track, actually coached against coach Mormon for about four years and each one of those years that you know we kept coaching track against each other we had some good competition but through those competitions coach Mormon and I built a great relationship and got it became really good friends each and every year and so that's how I ended up at Longfellow once I found out he was the athletic director at Longfellow I was really interested in working for him and so last track season I he actually came and approached me at one of the track meets asking if I would be interested. And so I said, absolutely, just tell me what I need to do. And here we are. Yeah. Uh, now, one year later, we're, uh, we're the lucky ones that, uh, that, that get to have Coach Morstead part of our, uh, part of our athletic program. So let me ask you this. Uh, now that you've been here for about a year, what do, you, what do you think of Longfellow? Oh, I absolutely love Longfellow. I've, I think what I love most about it is the uh, friendships, not only just with Coach Mormon, but the friendships that I've built with other coaches at the, you know, for uh, coaching staffs for basketball, volleyball, track, it, not just the, uh, for the relationships with the coaches, but also administration and teachers. And, and the most important thing, you know, for all of us are the kids. Right, right, absolutely. It's, the kids are really what we, what we do it what we all do this for. So um, you talked about all of the different programs and athletic programs that, that we have that you've kind of built relationships with. So um, let me ask you, what's the best part of being part of the family at Longfellow Middle School or Norman Public Schools for that matter? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say Norman Public Schools have been really great with, to me and for my family as well. And I, can, I could not be happier than what I am right now. And, you know, the biggest thing that I love about being at Longfellow are the kids. I mean, I've, it took a while for me to break into these kids because they're like, oh, we got this first-year coach that's coming in here. Let's give, you know, test this out a little bit. But once I finally broke through to these kids, you can see that they started trusting me, started believing in me. And I, the biggest thing is you can tell that they started loving me. And, and the feeling was mutual, man. I love these kids, and I, I couldn't be happier where I am than where I am right now at Longfellow Middle School. Yeah, I can, uh, here's what I can say. I, I can tell, I've noticed, and I noticed it pretty early, but I can definitely see it even more so now. Uh, just, you know, when you're, it might, we might be between classes and the kids are walking from one class to the next. 
and you know like i'm on one side of the hall i'm way down the other side of the hall and i hear some kids scream coach Borstead, what's up <laughs> they come give you a big high five yeah I, it's it's very obvious that in just a short amount of time of you being at longfellow um you've developed relationships with kids i mean i mean i'm even to a certain degree envious of of how well you've built relationships with all of our athletes you've done a great job with that yes and and i think it's more of not just one specific sport but just for the whole school in itself because you know we're now i guess our biggest thing is we're trying to change the culture there at longfellow middle school and how do you do that you build relationships with the kids and that's just not one sport but all the sports that's right that's right that's couldn't agree with you more so um you it sounds like you're really passionate about coaching um so, and you've already kind of talked about relationships with the kids, but um, what else makes you so passionate about, uh, you know, coaching and what, what makes you just enjoy it? Oh, I, what I really like and, and, you know, really am passionate about coaching is just, I guess a lot of it's the strategy, you know, and that's the one thing I love is it's, a, it's almost like a live game of chess, whether it's football, yeah. basketball, or even track. That's what I love is just the competition. All right, I'm going to see how well – I can compete against other schools and pretty much just have fun doing it too. And, you know, and just, but, you know, again, it's making a difference in the kids and, and watching them grow as students and as athletes. It is always about the kids, but we, like, I, even I would be lying if I didn't say, man, there's a competitive spirit yes. down that really I, I enjoy being able to, to compete, you know, guys like you and I are too old and broken to uh, be able to do it ourselves anymore. So it's always nice to be able to try to uh, provide kids those uh, enriching experiences that we yeah. were able to have growing up. Um, so speaking of uh, enriching experiences when we were growing up, um, let's first start off out. Where, where, where are you from? I was born and raised in New Mexico. I was born in Albuquerque, and then I was raised in a town of uh, Portales, New Mexico. Wow. How, how, how many people live there in that town? Uh, Twelve to 15,000 people somewhere okay, in there. Okay, so it's a, it's a little town. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of where you grew up and how you went through you went through all your grade school and middle school yes. and so forth. Okay, so let's start here. Um, as a youngster, before you got to high school, uh, what sports did you participate in? Oh, I did uh, football, basketball, baseball, and track. Oh, wow. Four smart athletes, Four smart, man. Yeah. Don't just – hey, we're big at Longfellow about preaching multi-sport athletes, but this man didn't just – he didn't just preach it. He lived it, man. Four <laughs> sports. Four sports, hey, yeah. A man, of, a man of many abilities. Okay, so then uh, what about in high school? Uh, my freshman year, I did uh, basketball, baseball, and track. And then I was like, man, that's just too much on my plate. And so my sophomore through my senior year, all I did was play football and track. Football and track, sure. Sure. Um, so uh, let me ask you this then. What, um, as you look back to your years of growing up and going through sports and stuff like that, um, did you have like a favorite coach growing up? Oh, absolutely. I have a favorite coach. So let me ask you this. And I always like to ask this question. Um, when you think about your favorite coach, what were some of the qualities that really set that coach apart from all the other coaches that you had growing up? Uh, well, he was my position coach because uh, I, I played wide receiver and corner when I was in, in high school, and he was my corner coach, mm -hmm. and he he believed in me, so he would always make extra time for me. He's like, hey, if you want to get extra workouts in, hey, let's go do it. He would actually work out with me after school, before school, during the summers, and you know, he we'd sit down, break film down, and he was a really really good coach, and he was really passionate. He believed in me and instilled. The biggest thing is like be a student of the game and hard work. And 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 it's funny because when you talk about the way that that coach kind of did all those things for you, I can think of like I I can remember during this football season you yourself saying things like be a student of the game and 
and phrases yeah. like that. So it's really cool to hear how the coaches that we had in our lives made a certain influence. And, and, and in a lot of cases, that's kind of why we get into this is because yes. we want to make that same difference. So let me ask you this. What coach do you admire the most or think just does a fantastic job working for our kiddos at Longfellow? What coach? Oh, man. I'd say you, Larry Mormon. Oh, yeah. Okay, how about other no. than me? Other <laughs> than me. I appreciate that, but other than yeah. me, because we have a lot of good coaches that work really hard for us. I, I really can't think of just one coach that just really sticks out, because I'll tell you what, the coaches we have at uh, Longfellow Middle School, every one of them is great, and they're great in their own unique way and how they impact the kids, how they impact the sports that they're coaching. We've they're all great. I can't just pick one out. And we got a great coach at the long term. I, I, and, you know, I couldn't agree with you more on that. I'm, I'm really happy with the people that we have in our, in our uh, family within the athletic department. So let me ask you this, um, kind of some fun questions, because I like to ask fun questions. Um, and by the way, those of you sitting here watching, he had no idea what these questions were going to be. <laughs> so he's just, he's getting them uh, off the cuff. He didn't get like, the question bank a day ahead of time and get time to think about it. Like he's just doing this off the cuff right now. So, and you know, if you need a minute to think about this one, that's fine. Okay. Um, what was your single favorite moment about the school year this year? And it could be teaching, you know, paraprofessional, it could be coaching, it could be anything, whatever it was. If you were to pick one thing that sticks out to you the most this year as the best part or the best moment, what would you pick? Ooh. And why? Okay. I would say summer pride. And the reason why is it's my first time there. Mm -hmm. And you and Coach Davison and Coach Owen – we're actually introducing me to all the kids and you can just tell within these kids face like, Oh, who's this new coach? Well, let's see if we can push his boundaries a little bit to see, you know, what kind of coach we have. And it took a while, but you know, once I finally got to these kids and had that breakthrough, I think that's when the kids started believing in me and like, all right, we're going to give this coach a chance to see what happens. And so once they believed in what I was doing to help them out as a player and as a student, I think that's when it really started to change, and you can tell. All right, I'm about. We're going to be that. We're going to have a good year, and and that's. I think that's the single most moment that stuck out more than this whole year yeah. during the summer pride. Sure, I think I think your approach says a lot about your character too. Is that you wanted to get the kids to buy in, yes. to and believing in you, you know, rather than. You know, some sometimes uh, we have a, a, approaches like not saying we have coaches at Longfellow that do that, but there are people that say, you know, you have to believe this because I'm the coach and that's the rule. Yeah. And and I think that it's important that as coaches, we have the the belief that you know we want the kids to buy into what yes. we're doing, and and that's and that's the way that we want to do um, things here. Um, so. Now let's take the same question and go whole coaching career. Um, okay. So 19 years of coaching. Yes. Uh, I was, let's see, <laughs> you're going to hate me for saying this. I was 16 when you started coaching. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. I was in high school still. I would have probably coached you if you were in high school, yes. <laughs> so in your whole entire coaching career, what was your – favorite memory and you can give us some backstory or tell us a story about it um what's your favorite memory of coaching uh well i started coaching at a private school in uh dell city and okay. i coached high school football there 13 years and we won four state championships when i was there Holy so God. yeah and uh then once that was over with there then i went to a the uh, junior high there at, uh and more and more west and i think my greatest accomplishment was actually winning the city championship with my son his seventh grade year so that's i think that's awesome. every dad's dream is to be able to coach his son but also to coach a city championship so that was probably the greatest moment of my coaching yeah career. that's that's that is pretty special that's pretty awesome that's pretty yeah. awesome and I, I you know the cool thing about some of these questions is that 
you know, they're, they're questions that I haven't actually asked, you know, the coaches on our staff before. So it's, it's always fun to hear the answers that you get from people like you. Like, I know you well. Like, we talk yeah. all the time. But some of these questions we haven't talked about. So it's really cool to hear these ans- the, the, the answers that people give. Um, so now here's another fun one for you. <laughs> and you're, oh, I love this question. <laughs> what what do you want to be when you grow up? What do I want to be when I grow up? Well, I'm still growing up, you know. So <laughs> but you know, I think I'm doing what I want to do. I think this is what I want to do and I want to retire doing this. So That's I'm I'm living my life. I'm living my life. I like it. I like it. So, okay, last um last couple questions um and I'm just going to tell you what it is and you can just take it from here and just let me know when you're all good. So um, if there's anything else that you want to mention after this question, feel free. Um, But for any of your athletes or parents that are going to be tuning into this and watching, um, what is something that you'd like to say to all of them, especially in, you know, the midst of all this COVID stuff going on and schools being shut down and all of the staying home stuff you know it's the one thing that i think gets forgotten by so many adults is that you know we as adults we haven't really encountered something like this before so yeah. it's it's hard to get into the mind of what a middle school student is experiencing their brain so between the students you know our athletes our kids that we work so hard for and the parents or the community or anyone else that you feel that you would like to send a message to, um, take it over. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to say I hope the uh, community of Norman is actually doing really well. I hope everybody is healthy and safe and everybody's doing a good job of taking care of one another. And I think, you know, during this time where we've actually had to slow down and be quarantined pretty much in our own homes, I've actually hoped that people have stopped to actually – focus on being a family once again, you know, mm-hmm. spending time with kids, you know, going and doing stuff together, maybe even just staying home playing board games or doing something, you know, just to really just step back and to be a family once again, because we get so busy with our daily lives that we just sometimes forget to be a family. And that's what's actually happened with me is I've actually got to work more on being a husband and then a dad as well to, you know, my family. And so I think that's just the biggest thing is just, hey, you know, be a family whether it's at Longfellow or even at your home phone or your own home, you know, be a family. Yeah. Yeah. That it's funny. It's funny. You bring that up because, um, you know, I was just talking to my wife's family last night is that, I mean, there really isn't nothing about this coronavirus is good, but there has been some very strange positives that have come about it. You know, things like families are, you know, closer together. I'm seeing more kids outside playing than I've seen in years. Yeah, um, absolutely. And 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 there there is some good about the whole thing. And I think um I think it's providing people the opportunity to reflect maybe on some of the things that we take for granted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's what a lot of us have done, just actually take it for granted, you know, and because, like I said, once again, we get so busy. I was like, I don't you know you and I, we, like during football season, we wouldn't get home to, what, 10 or 11 o'clock, you know. And my poor wife, she's asleep by the time I get home. And, and mm-hmm. then do it again the next day, you know. And so it just actually helps us slow down a little bit. Hey, you know what? Time to invest some quality time with our families once again. And I know that's what you've been doing, too, with your wife. Yep, yep. All right, Coach. Well, hey, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, <laughs> He's he's the first guy. He's the uh, the guinea pig of this whole experiment. Um, but we love him. We appreciate him. Um, he's you know it's his, it, he just finished up his first year at Longfellow and um, and uh, I appreciate you for just number one your willingness to do this first because yeah. it's kind of like you didn't know the questions. You didn't know what you were necessarily getting into. <laughs> um, but yeah. I also I also appreciate. You know all the things you've done for our kids, for our athletic program, um, and and I, and I'm really excited about uh, where you're going to be taking our athletic programs that you're leading uh, in the future. Absolutely, and I got to say this: I tell you what, 
I couldn't ask for a better athletic director to work for. And I tell you what, Larry Mormon, you're a great man. And I tell you what, you know, working here with you at Longthorne Middle School, I know we had the friendship, you know, during track season when we were going against each other. But I tell you what, you and I got a whole lot closer this year. And I tell you what, you're my dude, man. So love you, brother. All right, man. Well, uh, uh, you take care and, and thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it.